Hey guys, I want to go ahead and do a quick little let's remember some things. You should have read your chapters, you should have created notes, looked at the PowerPoints, listened to any lecture that was put up for you. But I did, I'm getting ready to post a blueprint for you for the test. A blueprint is going to tell you how many questions, like for pneumonia, how many questions for uh electrolytes how many for abgs and acid base so i broke that down you will have a 50 question exam you will have um five calculations that you'll have to do it won't be anything that we have not gone over so no iv stuff yet but it will be everything up to that point as far as your calculation piece um even conversions so review your conversions at all times but let's get started because I do want to hit a few key points to kind of make sure I drive the point home so that you'll understand. Um, I want to say this to you. We're going to start with pneumonia. Just know with my pneumonia, if I'm hanging an antibiotic or anything like that, I've got to get cultures if you're doing any kind of infection. But for um, pneumonia, it's respiratory. So we're going to get sputum cultures. If I have an infection somewhere else, say a UTI that's unresolved, renals are involved, then I would get blood cultures. But no matter what, you get your culture, whichever one you're getting, prior to starting antibiotics. Because if you start the antibiotics, it's going to alter that. I want to just key in on that. Um, know that if you have a patient that comes in, that's being admitted to the hospital with pneumonia. So they come in and they're gonna be admitted. There is a protocol that has been put into place because it has been proven, evidence base is proving that if we can get those antibiotics in quickly, that we have a better um, turnaround. These patients will do much better. So when we're administering antibiotics, you wanna do it upon admission, they get admitted, you usually try to get it in with four to six hours whatever the protocol of the facility, but the thought process is within four to six hours that antibiotics should be in, okay? Um, one thing also with our um, pneumonia patients, they can get filled up with a bunch of yucky stuff in those lungs, that alveoli are just filled with different yucky stuff. When that happens, um, it can be very painful to breathe. And I know that in class, I talked about surgical patients coming out, but you know, one way to prevent them from getting um, respiratory acidotic, meaning they're maintaining all their CO2 is by getting their opioids, give pain medicine so people can take a big breath, open heart patients, you know, the sternum's been cut down they're put back together and they're out there. It hurts to take a breath, that moves, right? So you wanna give those pain medicines. But if you have an oxygenation saturation that is below 90, then what you wanna do is first put on supplemental oxygen because we want to oxygenate the body. Then you would go get your opioid or get pain medicine and give that to them. Then you would go do the next step of whatever you needed to do. When you're taking the test, when you're in practice, prioritizing care is vital. So just think it kind of through. I, what's the priority? I need to oxygenate. So if I go below 90, I need to start thinking oxygenation. I need to start supplementing. Um, always remember that all antibiotics, if they are started, need to be finished unless there's a problem and the physician stops that antibiotic. If that's the case, it stops. But any other time, that plan of care is going to go forward. You take all of the antibiotics. You don't stop. Um, remember why we give it. What, who do we give antibiotics to? Well, we have three different types of pneumonia. Just remember that. We have community acquired. Um, we, have, we can have bacterial pneumonia. We can have viral pneumonia. Um, and the thing with all of this is that, and we can have aspirate pneumonia. 
So then if we have aspirate pneumonia, that means we've aspirated. We have either vomited or drank something and we've inhaled it into the lungs that's gone down in there, shouldn't be there, sitting there and it's making and creating this problem for us, this infection in the lungs. Bacterial pneumonia is caused by a bacteria. And that is the pneumonia that we give antibiotics to. Aspirate pneumonia, we will probably, we will give antibiotics to. But viral pneumonia, we don't give antibiotics to. We would give an antiviral to try to help with that. That's why, you know, different things that we do, like influenza, stuff like that, those are viruses. And so we want to give an antiviral to, to counteract, to attack and hopefully help this patient heal faster. So that's just a thought. Um, there is a PowerPoint up um, for the different, um, you have expectorants and um, we have different things that will dry us, you know, antihistamines. That, that PowerPoint, I do want you to look at and definitely understand like we're, what's categorized. I've listed some of the drugs. So just remember like dihydramine, um, you know, we're looking at Benadryl, those things. I need you to understand which ones go under what and what they do. So one's gonna help you cough. One's gonna dry you up. One's going to, um, you know, um, help move stuff out. There's just a lot of different things that um, we give. So just review that PowerPoint. You should have already looked at it at this point. It's been up for a few days and just out, just make a little note. It's not super big. It's just as quick as that um, is written. You know, why are we giving it? I give Benadryl for what, you know, to to counteract that histamine release. Um, just different things. I want you to just kind of look at it so you understand those drugs because they all kind of look the same. So when you're looking at the freens and the means and the amines, <laughs> just kind of remember which one goes where, okay? Um, just talking about respiratory acidosis and alkalosis, I want to drive this point home. When we're talking about respiratory acidosis, I'm not breathing very well. I have suppressed or compromised respirations. I'm holding on to CO2 for some reason. It could be damage to my alveoli, my lung tissue, or it could be that I am over medicated for some reason or another, and I'm not able to breathe to blow off my CO2. If, and that I am considered, um, acidotic. When I hold on to CO2, I am acidotic. When I blow off CO2, I'm getting rid of all the CO2 by hyperventilating or because I'm on a ventilator and I've overventilated the patient, I'm respiratory alkalotic. I just want to make that clear. And for metabolic acidosis and alkalosis, remember metabolic alkalosis is major vomiting. Things are coming up. I'm either to suction or I'm throwing up. And acidosis, metabolic acidosis, I always is the excessive diarrhea. Okay. It's all coming out that end. So um, remember metabolic acidosis and you'll know diarrhea. So that's important to know. Um, let me go ahead and say again, if you see a potassium imbalance, either hypo or hyperkalemia, or I'm giving potassium or doing something with potassium, when you see that, you ought to automatically think cardiac, right? We're worried about cardiac issues, hypo or hyper. There's different things that happen, and I do want you in to know you know, what's my heart going to do? It's going to do something either end, but so let's just say I'm looking at a potassium supplement or something like that. If I happen to have to give it or, or stop it, I always want to assess what 
You want to assess your respirations and your cardiac status because if it's out of whack, something might be going on. And if I correct it and I get it back into the norm, I still want to assess my patient. Assess, assess, assess. Because it can cause a, while it's shifting, if I'm giving something to create that osmotic shift, then I need to understand that they're stable. Their vital signs are stable. I just want to make that a point. Also, Kussmaul's breathing. I have said this in class. You need to know what it is. It is that deep, rapid, uncontrolled respiratory pattern. They're breathing deep and uncontrolled um, and rapid. It's, it's a very different looking breath, uh, respiratory pattern. The question I have for you, and I just want to make sure I drive this home, is when will I see Kussmaul's breathing? You will see it in different things that go on. There's some trauma that we can see Kussmaul's breathing with, but for fluid and electrolytes and acid base, remember metabolic acidosis is where we'll see Kussmaul's respirations. It is so important you understand that. And so when I tell you that, then you got to say, well, metabolic acidosis, what's going on? Diarrhea um, and some other things, disease processes that can cause that. Okay. So what are Kussmaul respirations and when do I see it? What electrolyte imbalance? Am I acidotic? Am I alkalotic? You need to understand that. Okay. Re <clears throat> excuse me. Remember your diuretics. Just remember them when, when we give them loop diuretics are going to, they're potassium wasters. You've got to start to be able to conceptually and in your mind, think about this. I'm giving a loop diuretic. I'm pulling potassium off and I'm going to urinate it out, right? So I need to replace potassium. So just remember those. And those loop diuretics normally end with I'd. That's a good way of being able to finally see it. Like in a question, if I see something out there and it has IDE, at the end of it, my thought is it's a loop diuretic, you know, furosemide, for example. Okay. Um, also, when we're giving those, what are we doing? We're pulling fluid, right? So when do we give diuretics? Well, we've talked about this. We're either going to have fluid loss and we're not going to give diuretics. We need to give fluid or we're going to have fluid overload. And if we have fluid overload, you know, what are we going to see? We're going to have, you know, bounding pulses, we'll have JVD, right? All of those things. So we want to give a diuretic to pull the volume so we can eliminate the volume. Um, also, I want you um, to understand that that potassium cardiac, sodium neuro, but I will tell you, I want you to think about this. When we're running, playing, when we see that and cramp and everything, what affects muscle tissue besides potassium? Because that's what it's dealing with the heart, that potassium. What else can? Calcium. So calcium affects muscle too. So as you're looking, a lot of them can affect, um, cause muscle weakness and all that. But when we're thinking cardiac, it's potassium, potassium, potassium. But if I don't have a potassium choice, I need to think calcium too. So there will be far, five calculation questions. So just review that. Um, and then we have a couple IV questions. And you've heard it, you should have in lab and, and you just throughout the last semester and into this semester, there's three. And I just, it's about putting in an IV, read the questions very carefully, and you'll be able to answer those. I hope this helps. Please review your ABGs, that Rome interpretation, respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. Just start knowing if it's less than this and it's greater than that, which way the arrows are going, right? If it's CO2 and it's going this direction, then my pH should be going this direction. It should be going opposite. If it's metabolic, it should be going the same way down that highway, right? They're equal makes that little E. So just remember that Rome, respiratory 
opposite metabolic equal. And when you're looking at that, then you need to know your values, your pH, your CO2, right? PaCO3 and your bicarb. So we want to make sure we understand that. You're going to see a blood gas in the questions and you'll see a PaO2. That is telling you your oxygenation. When we're calculating ABGs, we're not looking at that, not at this level. We are right now looking at pH, CO2, and bicarb. And we're going to make our decision. Are we respiratory or metabolic, acidotic or alkalotic? You're going to do great. Study hard. You've got this. And I'm excited. We're going to keep moving forward. Talk to you soon. See you soon. And keep on studying.